So thank you very much for the introduction and uh, thanks also for the previous speaker for the very interesting uh, talks. So my task today is to guide you through the wind farm yield optimization through reinforcement learning. This is a topic that we have been working over the last couple of two years together with uh, my team and the colleagues from the Aon Renewables that I would like hereby to uh, acknowledge and thank. But uh, let me uh, just uh, start with the wind turbine basic, of course, the job of a wind turbine is to extract energy from the incoming wind, right? There are two main parameters that we should take into account is the yaw angle, so basically that orientate in a, in a cell with respect to the incoming wind direction. And uh, there is the blade pitch angle, so we can modulate basically how much of the energy that coming from the wind is uh, taken out by basically changing the angle of attack of the three blades. So typically, when uh, we go to industrial application, wind turbines don't stand alone, but they are actually equipped in a wind park, they're put together. And what comes uh, in this situation is what we call turbine wake. So the upstream turbine creates shadowing effect to the downstream turbines, which makes, of course, uh, uh, a wind flow structure which is, which is characterized by reduced wind uh, speed and also increased turbulence intensities. Of course, these are effects that uh, are bound to uh, degrade the absolute power that you can get for the group of turbine. So what you see in the plot down here is basically an example for you have a front turbine which experience a wind speed of 10 meters per second and you have a uh, downstream turbine which is located 300 <laughs> meters away. And the red line shows what is the expected velocity deficit that we expect as a function of the distance from the first turbine. And to have an idea what is the impact you see on the right hand side, what is the uh, correlation between the, imp the wind speed that the turbine is facing and its power output. So of course, if you have look at these uh, plots carefully, you immediately realize what is the first uh, measure that we can use to mitigate the wind uh, uh, wake effect is basically when we do uh, the layout optimization of our wind park, we can try to make the uh, turbine spacing as much as large as possible. Of course, this is not something that is always possible and uh, you can do it mainly on the prevailing wind direction and you cannot optimize all over the place because otherwise you would end up with a very large uh, park. So what you can do instead is actually use the blade pitch angle to modulate how much of the energy is extracted from the first wind turbine, thus reducing the wind deficit. So you see all the lines refer to different pitching parameters of the turbine. And then you can leave more energy down to the uh, downstream turbine, such that uh, if you find the trade-off between these parameters, how much you reduce the first and how much you get for the second, you can optimize the overall power output of the group of turbine on the test. And of course, this uh, hold, uh, works also if you have uh, an example of uh, an array of multiple turbines. But uh, I said in the introduction, yes, we want to use reinforcement learning. So what is about reinforcement learning? Let me just recap. Reinforcement is, uh, learning is a specific uh, um, algorithm that uh, are designed to interact with an environment and learn from its interaction with it. And I would say as fast as possible. So in this framework, you have typically an agent that implements some action based on his current uh, knowledge about the system. And this interacts with an environment which can be a simulation of a physical uh, uh, system. And the effects of the actions are actually evaluated through an assessment center that basically promote those uh, behavior that are actually going toward the target, in our case, maximize the power out and uh, inhibits those uh, actions that were actually leading to a decrease on the power output. But then you can ask yourself, do we really need such a complex uh, phase for doing this? I show we can simulate basically what is the wind deficit. And indeed, we could use uh, computational fluid dynamic to do this, however, these are typically computationally very demanding and uh, costly, so that it's uh, not really suited for online control of wind park. They are wake model dependent, so depending on the details you want to simulate, uh, these you get different results. And of course, they are bound to have difficulties to track changing uh, situations. For example, you have a wind park condition where you can have some turbine which are uh, out of, uh, down for maintenance, or you might have changing in the environments, a new built uh, building or a new park built nearby that you need to simulate once again, and you would need to reiterate this. The good news is that uh, we wanted to have this as a data-driven, self-learning, adaptive approach that could also run on commodity hardware. We didn't want to have a data center to run the simulation and be able to operate the park. And uh, likely, we, had, we could build our uh, development use on successful application. So we know, we heard about also this morning about uh, some important 
uh, breakthrough that were done in the field, for example, in the board game, control uh, or theory and machine tuning, as well as, for example, uh, the steering and optimization of complex uh, cooling systems. But let me say how was the architecture that we built. So first of all, we had to develop a full suite for simulating the wind park. It's the environment is basically how we, it's our wind park. And uh, for this, we had to build a uh, wind generation, which basically determine what are the upcoming wind uh, situation that the park will be experienced. This could be random, fixed, or based on transition probability on historical data. So because we have to take an action of upcoming wind direction, and we have to have an idea what is likely to come. Of course, this is built on a wind park model, which has the layout, as I discussed before, the parameters of the, the specific turbine, and of course, what is the wake model that we want to implement. This is just for simulation. Right? And then, once we have this, we will have a, a, a reinforcement layer agent that will take actions, and we will measure its impact on the, via a reward function. So, what is the goal that we want to find? We want to find the best settings of the turbine, uh, what we call the policy, so that the output of the turbine groups is optimized, depending on the wind conditions. And what the reinforcement agent does is explore the environment, it updates its policy based on the gain information and uh, do some kind of uh, uh, reward uh, function approximation. So the state in this situation is basically a, a combination of the wind conditions and the uh, curtailment level. So if you want the pitch angle that uh, setting that we applied on to the front turbine, and the reward is of course the gain and the loss that you uh, observe with respect to the normal operation. So when you just let the turbine operate normally. So once we were uh, kind of um, sure that the algorithm could be uh, fulfilled, the um, its expectation it could learn fast in this uh, simulated environment. We went through a pilot implementation. This is a wind park, which is actually in the US. You have uh, 55 uh, turbines in uh, seven different rows, six different rows. And uh, as you can recognize in the picture, this uh, layout was optimized with respect to the up normal, the optimal wind direction, which is uh, typically coming from the south. So you see the inter turbine spacing from south to north is uh, maximized. But you can also realize that in some subdominant wind direction, let's say from 120 to 160, the, wind, the inter turbine spacing is very much uh, reduced. And this, of course, makes it a, a nice uh, case study to exploit this kind of algorithms. So in this situation, we took uh, basically three group of turbines that are shown in these plots. And we decided to activate this uh, wake management uh, procedure in the red one, so the upcoming uh, the, uh, upstream wind turbines and measure basically what is the effect on the gain or the power output of all three uh, turbines group. And these were activated in these uh, regions that are shown here, which are different depending on the topology that we have targeted. So let's see how it looks like. So this is a plot that shows uh, an example of reinforcement learning for a turbine group Q15 for a particular wind speed of 10 meters per second in a particular uh, wind direction of 147 degrees. So what you see in this plot, the top plot shows basically the running reward. So what is the learning of the algorithm in terms of uh, what was a good choice or what was not a good choice, depending on the curtailment level that we uh, uh, activated. This is basically 60 kilowatts, so we reduce the power output artificially from the first turbine by a given amount. And we measure what is the reward, so how much was the power changing with respect to the normal operation. So in this case, we see we choose a curtailment of 400 kilowatts, which is shown here. And at the end, what you see in the down uh, plot is basically the cumulative reward. So what is the total gain that was observed by the algorithms as a function of the trials? So every time the algorithm was visiting or experiencing the same uh, wind direction and wind speed, he was trying a different uh, uh, policy in order to try to find what is the best parameters. So you see the first trial was not a good one, the second one neither. At some point, towards iteration 10, the algorithm starts to explore the curtailment region, which is, was about 200, 120 kilowatts. And here you see that actually the reward that is uh, learning is actually positive. So the zero is down here. And you see at that point, it starts recovering what are the losses that were observed during the learning phase. So here we were actually producing less energy than the nominal situation, but down up here we could actually recover it. So I should mention that, of course, this is not always the case. And this you can see up here for the three groups of turbines, 
Well, if you consider all the wind direction, we were actually uh, having losses about of the energy to about 10 to 12 percent. However, if you consider those beans or conditions that were visited at least 10 or 20 times, you see that the losses are kind of recovered. And then if we look at the uh, situation where we have actually visited enough time, these wind conditions, and we are actually sure about the reward function that we observe, what we call here converge, you see that the gains are reduced. And if you look at the situation and you assume that the system could always operate at the maximum level, so for example, in this case, at uh, this level 100, 110, you would actually be able to achieve a positive uh, increase of the energy. What to mention is that actually uh, this, uh, uh, these um, gains, which are shown here for the different turbines group, are also according to what we expect for the theory of the uh, wake, so that basically you can gain more if the distance between the turbines is closer, and then of course the gains reduce the more you move away. So this brings us already to the conclusion. I think we uh, can show that we apply reinforcement learning to dynamically optimize energy yield from a wind farm. The development uh, framework that we applied uh, has been successful and uh, it was really deployed in an uncontrolled environment, so changing wind condition, uh, changing uh, operational state of the turbines. And uh, this demonstrates once again the uh, possibility to apply this kind of argument to solve real, real life problem. <laughs> Of course, the energy gains are small. Uh, we had, if you average about all the three groups of turbine, we are about 0.8%. This, of course, of a very narrow wind sector that we investigate. So if you take into account the full park, at the end, the gain that you will have will be smaller. However, we learn a lot. And uh, for example, what could be done to improve this result in the future is actually to change the strategy to control the wind turbines. Instead of pitching the blades, you could actually redirect the uh, the rotor, so that uh, it is shown from the um, research that actually this should give larger uh, gains. However, introducing some more loads in the structure and mechanical uh, structure of the turbines so needs to be monitored. But this is something that uh, could be done and could open the doors to a full scale rollout. Nevertheless, the results of this pilot prove that uh, it's possible to influence and actually control wind turbine wakes based on a full data driven approach and use the state of the art. AI technology. Thank you very much.